Praise and glory to Jesus, our Creator and Savior, to the Honorable Diocesan Bishop Henry L. Johnson, to the resident bishops, Southern bishops, district elders, pastors, CDC officers, delegates, friends, and supporters. Holy greetings and heaven's favor be upon you. Once again, I count it an honor and a privilege to serve this great body known as our California District Council of the Pentecostal Assemblies of the World, where the fellowship is worth the sacrifice. And the fellowship that we have amongst us, no matter what sacrifices you had to make in order to be here to participate with us, it is worth the fellowship. Can somebody say amen? amen. I think can somebody say amen? amen. All right. Now, let me first begin this address by thanking Bishop H.L. Johnson, the CDC Executive Board, and our State Cabinet for allowing the Christ in them to serve with me in our efforts to meet the spiritual needs in part of the great state of California. So much can be said about your productive contributions to our common cause, but time and space will not permit. However, let the record reflect in my heart of hearts, you are the best, bar none. As we move forward in, in our assigned duties and tasks to reconcile all things in Christ, let us be mindful of the overall goals and objectives outlined in the contents of the vision of our fearless leader, the Honorable Henry L. Johnson. As I understand with the spirit of inclusion, or as I understand some of the major features of this mission-oriented vision, is for us to realize and understand that the true purpose of the one true church is to evangelize the world with a spirit of inclusion by way of Christ-centered salvation. Everyone say Christ-centered salvation. Void of any doctrinal or moral compromises and move we the children of God to a mature and sanctified life in Christ which will produce the works of him who will call us out of darkness into his marvelous light. And this we will do if God permits. Again, thank you, Bishop Johnson, for providing us with a vision of hope. Now it is incumbent upon us to receive the mantle of reconciliation and dispatch our forces with the resources to go and reconcile others to Christ and provide them with the same hope of eternal life so that our Father's house might be filled. In other words, now is the time to minister through hope so that our objective may be achieved. Once this is actually accomplished, it will create a climate of renewed revival by which others will witness and join us in spreading the hope that only in Christ lies the answer for all the trouble in the world today. Can somebody say that? So let us get busy by first eliminating all non-productive, ineffective methodologies and anti dated systems that will block us from reaching our God-ordained goals. This action within itself will produce a greater comprehension of real church purpose. This requires us to view the church as a business, but it is the business of God and Jesus, history's greatest visionary, exemplified this reality at the age of 12 years old when we read in the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter number 2, verse number 49, and he said unto them, How is it that ye sought me? Wish ye not that I must be about my father's business? So then the question should be applied to each and every member of the California constituency. That is, whose business am I about? Now the only answer that I can personally provide to this question is found in Joshua 24, 15 in the latter part. As for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. But I cannot be successful in my quest to achieve this objective by myself. For this cause, let me state that as an elected leader and servant of this council, I need your continued support in providing a greater, greater measure of hope to the members of the council. I am also calling on each of you to reflect back on the past two and a half years of our current administration's performance and take pride in the fact that we as a team pursuing a steadfast dream have proactively initiated the necessary sacrifices and personal contribution and obligations and assisted one another in overcoming some financial and operational hardships. And this we will continue to do, the Lord being our help. However, we must have asked 
assets and resources, both human and tangible, in order to maintain this mode of continuity. This will also provide us with the type of tools we need to produce a product of hope, both to those who are in or out of the ark of safety. This is our mission. This is our destiny. Here lies our opportunity to be the personification of a prototype of a five-star Christian stewardship. Another important point we must all bear in mind is the reality of the results of failing to provide and maintain adequate supplies that are essential to our goal of producing reconciliatory ministerial activities. Example, whenever we take away the assets that produce our product and put nothing back, we will eventually deplete our existing resources, impoverish those as well as that which sustains us, and consequently destroy the hope of those who invest in us. Nevertheless, they had such will not become a reality in the business apparatus of the California District Council. Why? Because we have and will continue to lead our constituency into a ray of hope no matter how difficult this journey might become. So when our old operational models of whatever sort are not holding up, and when ethics mean little to some, and the religious and economic environments are unstable, as a team, we would not offer just pat answers, but as a unit of dedicated stewards, we must still provide hope for those who depend upon us. Yet, this hope we are providing must not rest solely upon our organizational and infrastructural changes applied by our human efforts, but the hope we are supplying to those who are thirsty for it is rooted and grounded in the words of our beloved Apostle Paul, as quoted by him in the book of Philippians, chapter number 4, verse number 19. But my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Finally, I conclude by encouraging us to resolve to move ever forward and never backward during the next four years of enjoying the favor of Christ in our concili reconciliation, restoration, and recommitment to providing five-star purpose-oriented service to the master himself. In pursuit of the pursuer, amen, yours truly, Dr. Douglas. God bless you and keep up the great work.